think I've got a great video for you all today. We're going to be taking a look at the TLK12. It's a brand new fan from Thermalrite. So first, a little bit of cross comparison versus other fans. So we've got my cooler data, noise normalized, and at 100% PWM fan signaling, where the fan ranks versus its brethren, the other Thermalrite fans. So that's why it's here, because Thermalrite makes a lot of products, and I've reviewed a lot of their fans because they're at a great price point, so I wanted to have an easy way to just be like, hey, this is how they generally rank, but mind, you should continue watching because we're going to have graphs on the actual noise profiles because fans' locations may surprise you. And then a little bit of spec information, it does have a fluid dynamic bearing, they call it the version 2, so overall, uh, looking like a pretty interesting fan and very subtle rgb so let's continue on here's the spec information flow dynamic bearing 12 volt 0.16 amps 2150 rpm that is a great rpm for a standard all-rounder type fan it's not going to maximize your performance like the 3000 rpm fans but i certainly like them better than the two or 1500 rpm fans uh, 60 cubic feet per minute of airflow, 2.87 millimeters of H2, 2O, and 27 decibels by their readings. They're not going to line up with my decibel readings. So first up with the graphs is the case simulation test. This simulates different sized cases in a front to back airflow type scenario. So first is the six inch mark. The six inch mark can also be represented by a short throw distance as I like to call it. That uh, meaning would be a fan at the bottom of your case blowing up towards your GPU. And it's also represented by a shorter case. Think a case that can ITX build, but it's still a front-to-back airflow type design. It'd be short and squat in shape. The 9-inch mark is where you hit a standard ATX size motherboard inside the computer case, but you'd only have room for like 220 millimeter class fans in terms of its overall length. Again, these distances are the front of the case where that front fan is to your CPU air cooler. That's the distance. The 11 inch mark is your standard mid towers. So think 320 millimeter class fans or uh, 240s. And then finally at the 14.5 inch mark, your truly large towers like the Frock Design Torrent, uh, which can house 340 millimeter class fans or more on that bottom length. So what you're really trying to do is maximum air speed at your, the location of your CPU air cooler if you're liquid cooling. Uh, having good airflow through it is still important, uh, but uh, this would be a little bit less applicable. So this is geared towards air cooling. Now, all that doesn't mean much unless we compare it against something. So I have a standardized control fan, which is based three parts A12X and 5 to one part A14. I do apologize, this is a little bit of an older um, slideshow for filming so that I have not updated the shapes. So I'm going to just try to use my mouse cursor to point at things. So the control fan is this teal line. I'm drawing on it right now. And then we have the blue line, which is the TLK12, which is lining up very closely with the TLB12, which is known for performing very close to the A12X25. And then at the top here, we have the TLS12W, which outperformed my control fan. At 100% PDW fan signaling, they are shaping up very nicely. So here's the B12, this red line. Then we have the S12, this green line, matching my control fan fairly closely. The control fan is the teal line right here. And we have the TLK12 in the blue line, uh, slightly outperforming my control fan at uh, larger case sizes, but slightly underperforming it in that middle section in the nine and the 12.5 inch mark. But overall, I would say it appears to be a good all-rounder in a variety of case sizes. Now, all that doesn't mean much until we compare it against other fans I have tested. So here's a small subsample selection of fans I've tested. Again, I do apologize that this is a little bit of an older slideshow, and I haven't updated the shapes of the indicators for each of the lines like I did on some of my other newer videos. So even though this is coming out later than those, this is actually created uh, much later on. That's uh, just for my sanity's sake because this is basically a free channel at this point. Anyways, the TLK12 is sitting right in the middle of the pack. I'd call that a great place for it to be. It's not a top performer, it's not a bottom performer. So let's continue moving on. 
Again, this is for noise normalized results. At 100% PW and fan signaling, it is once again sitting kind of in the middle of the pack. Actually, as you're hitting the 14.5 mark, so if you're looking at a larger case, this is outperforming many of the other fans. So it's actually a great result. The other fans around it are like the Sickle Flow and the S12. Uh, I did the W edition, so the white. So it is a looking like a really good fan overall. And now noise results. So it's not the best. Um, decibel rating, every 10, 10 decibels is a doubling in noise value. So from 5 to 15 is a doubling in that noise value. From 10 to 15 is approximately a 50% increase in noise value. Um, if you've seen any of my newer videos where I talked about zone versus decibels, uh, I encourage you to watch it if you haven't. Um, I'm going to finish out my backlog of videos that I already recorded in decibels, and going forward I'll go with whichever one gets the popular vote. Uh, anyways, the TLK12 is sitting right here towards the bottom middle of the pack, so it's not the most noise efficient, but it's certainly doing fairly well overall. Next we have performance for my CPU air cooler, the Noctua U12A. It is a fairly high density air cooler, which is why it's using it. I do plan on acquiring a radiator at some point in the future. Unfortunately, it is outside uh, the scope and purchasing capability of this channel. It is through help of my patrons and viewers like you continuing to watch and subscribe to this channel and uh, joining me as a YouTube member that will make all of that possible in the future. Uh, once I basically reach monetary thresholds, uh, hard to say. Anyways, uh, the first graph here on the right left side is airspeed vertical versus RPM horizontal, and this is a blade efficiency graph. The TLK12 is sitting right in line with the S12 and the B12, as and slightly outperforming my control fan, which again is based three parts A12 x5 to one part A14. Now on the right graph, we have decibels versus airspeed, and the TLK12 is sitting above the majority of the fans, at least until we hit higher uh, RPM airspeeds, where it tends to shift down a little bit and it lines up more closely with the control fan. Overall, I call that a very good result. Now, how does it compare with other fans I have tested? So these are noise normal results. At the tippy top, we got the P28, the Tough Fan 12 Pro, the TLB12 Extreme, T Tough Fan 12 Turbo, Pure Wings 3, and then we have the TLK12. So for, for noise normalized testing, it is a great result. It is sitting right at the top. So a lot of the opinion on this fan will have to come down to value, but let's continue and we'll get to value at the end. At 100% p on fan signaling, well, it's not a 3000 RPM fan, so no surprise that it's sitting around the 2.2, 2.1 meter per second mark. The results I got were at 2.1 meter per second, I have some math over here on the right right side bottom for approximately what airspeed equates to what wattage. I have a whole video with the testing and how I came up with that, and that is with accurate within, I would say, about 5 watts plus or minus uh, for my particular CPU on my particular cooler. Uh, if you're going to extrapolate this results to different coolers, the results will differ. Uh, but the fans should line up in more or less this order, but do note that fans are often tuned for the fans that they come with. Um, but the TLK12 is sitting in a very good uh, realm of other fans, as well as its noise level is not completely outrageous. It's a little bit on the noisy side at 23.4 decibels. Um, there are fans that are lower down the stack that are noisier, but there are also fans that are further up the stack that are... Uh, quieter or equivalent to noise for slightly better performance. As for how it looks with uh, noise versus air speed on the graph, it's sitting in the middle. Uh, it levels out a little bit as uh, RPMs increase, so it gets a little bit flat and doesn't gain as much at the high end, but it's overall doing fairly well, and I would be pretty happy with those results. Uh, other fans that are notable around here are the Tough Fan 12 Pro, uh, indicating right there. And my current top pick for uh, all rounders is the Unifan P28. It's just 
dominates the field. And this is the RGB appearance for this fan. It is just a very simple lighting effect around the edges, and if we take a look at the other side, it is basically the exact same thing. Actually, it looks pretty okay, given that it only has three struts, so it doesn't interrupt the overall appearance. So if you like a subtle RGB effect, this may be a great pick for you. Alrighty, next we have CFM testing. It's my least favorite test because it's basically how good is this fan at blowing air down a tube? It's a scientific exercise. It is not real world. So reviewers who only use this, you should probably avoid. Uh, anyways, so we have CFM vertical, RPM horizontal, and decibels horizontal on the other graph. And the first one is CFM versus RPM, blade efficiency. They line up very closely, no surprise. Then we have on the right side, me that should be CFM, not meters per second. I do apologize for that error. Anyways, uh, air speed versus noise, and they drop back a pretty large amount. So let's investigate. Uh, noise normalized results. The TLK12 is sitting in the bottom middle or the top middle of the air other fans I've tested. So once again, it's not a bad place for it to be, but it isn't at that leading position that we saw in the uh, airspeed through the cooler testing. How about at 100%? Well, it's sitting right in line where you would expect it with other 2000, 2100 RPM fans, plus or minus with the other fans around it. So no real surprise prizes going on there. Uh, it is a bit noisier than the A12X drive, but it is less expensive. Then we have CFM versus decibel rating. And the TLK12 is sitting right in line with it a large grouping of other fans, so more or less average. Okay, now for a value proposition. When I purchased this fan, it was $16. Um, I, I have a cutoff for what I consider expensive fans, and that's over $18, so it fits into my more inexpensive fan category. Uh, so with that uh, being taken into consideration, it isn't a peak value fan. You can see on here that there are other fans that are just significantly better value. And I want to iterate something, value is not uh, performance uh, and doesn't directly equate to performance. It is performance per dollar. If you have a fan that's cheap enough, even if performance is crap, it can still be good value and score very highly here because it is so cheap. Conversely, you could have a fan that's truly excellent, but it's so expensive, so it looks absolutely would look terrible. So you have to find the balancing point that works for you and determine what factors are most important to you. And I call those extras. That's noise performance, maximum air speed performance, the RGB, the physical appearance, whatever your extra is that fits your criteria. But if you're only looking at getting the cheapest fan, uh, get the most fan for your buck, that's where you focus on this type of information. Uh, the TLK12 just isn't quite hitting that peak value as a case fan at the 6-inch mark. Have it at the 11-inch mark. Well, no, it's not in that peak value. Um, if it comes in a triple pack, it may be less expensive per fan. This was just a single fan. So it's probably not the way to go there uh, in terms of overall value. It's not a terrible value. It is better than some of the more expensive fans by a pretty good margin. But it's just not at that tippy top that um, Thermoid was more or less known for. Uh, performance and in, in CFM noise normalized and at 100%. It's looking overall better here. It's ranking a little bit higher, but it's still not right at that tippy top scenario. And through the CPU air cooler, well, it's starting to differentiate itself a little bit more. It's still a far cry from the tippy top fans like the TLC12C, the TLG12, uh, the TLS12. Thermalright makes good cheap fans. Uh, this leads into future growth with the channel. I'd like when when I can kind of get their multiples of each fan and then have longevity testing. So that way I can truly know how consistent a brand is with their production of fans. All right, and that brings us to the end of the video. This is the raw data. I like to show it off at the end of every video. The raw data does belong to me. However, you are welcome to use it for your own personal use. But I do ask that you give me credit uh, where credit is due as the person who generated the data because it takes me about one and a half to two hours to generate this love detail. Now this brings me to 
what can I do to improve the videos? If you've got suggestions, constructive criticism for me on ways that I can improve the video and make it more entertaining to watch, I am open to that. I'm here for the tough love because I want to make them more enjoyable to watch. It's all a learning process for me. Every time I try to make it better, uh, as you know, you may, may have heard in the video, I did talk about areas that I know I can improve because I've implemented that newer ones. Unfortunately, I don't have actual time to go back through all the ones that I've already created these slideshows for to, that I haven't gone around to like, or actually have uh, the recordings for. I don't have time to re-record everything. So unfortunately, I just have to leave that as it is. Um, again, joining me as a YouTube member, just hitting that subscribe button, joining me on Patreon, it really does go a long way. I know I'm a small channel. I want to grow. I would like to be the definitive source on computer fans on the internet, if at all possible. I am an aerospace engineer by trade. I have a background in computational fluid dynamics. It is my specialty, as well as uh, structures. Uh, so there's that. Anyways, I do appreciate each and every one of you for making it this far in the video. I hope you have a great day, and I hope I'll see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.